what do you want to see Michael Gove announce? Well, what we've had so far this overnight is a rehash of some money that was in the budget. There are 20 parts of the country that are going to get a bit of a refund on the money that's been taken from us over the last few years since the Prime Minister took office. Of course, we'll welcome that. We'll take it. Every penny counts in terms of investment outside of London and the South East. But um, I think the government has really missed the point. In too many parts of the country, people are struggling with the crisis unfolding in front of them. The energy bills are going up, shopping bills are going up. They're about to have a tax hike hit them in a couple of months time. And for decades, we've seen good jobs and good wages leaving our towns. Unless you get money back into people's pockets, we're not gonna have this King's Cross style regeneration that the government is talking about and for, for, will continue with this settlement where far too many young people have to get out in order to get on. We think the government should have far more ambition for our places than that. Our communities have that level of ambition. Why doesn't the government? And that, as you mentioned, you criticised uh, one of the announcements trail today, that investment for 20 towns and cities, uh, calling it a recycled pledge. How much in the way of new funds would Labour put in there when it comes to regenerating these areas? Well, look, the first thing is about getting good jobs and wages back into places that within living memory powered the world and made a contribution. If I've learned anything in the last few years from these big seismic political upheavals, it's that people both deserve and demand the right to make that contribution in the future. Kira and I saw it for ourselves in Grimsby last week when we went and met young apprentices working in the renewables industry, an industry that is being driven by business investment in Grimsby and supported by the local community as well. That's the sort of investment that every part of this country deserves. So our plan, as Rachel Reeves set out at party conference, is to invest £28 billion every year in the lifetime of the next parliament in creating those good energy jobs in every part of the country, our coastal towns, our industrial towns that once were at the centre of this country's economic fortunes and should be again. Now, Michael Gove has been referring to the Medici model, uh, taking inspiration from the methods the Medici family used to transform Florence in the 15th century. Um, there's talk too, this could actually be in the white paper itself. Um, do you think that will chime with the voters of Grimsby and Bishop Auckland? I mean, I just think across the board, there's this general sense that the government has lost the plot. We've got a cost of living on crisis unfolding in every nation and region of the UK. People simply don't have money um, to spend. And yet the government is running around talking about this renaissance revival and the regeneration of the rest of the country. King's Cross style regeneration, they're calling it. But King's Cross costs three billion to redevelop. The government staking it alone was worth more than three times as much as the money that has been allocated to a few parts of the country um, this morning. Essentially, what they're saying is you can do regeneration on the cheap while we pile large sums of your money into one very small corner of the country. That's not just missing the point, actually, that's downright insulting to people who have a contribution to make, who have huge ambition for their communities, but are watching their town centres fall apart and their young people have to get out in order to get on. That could be different. If the government had a level of ambition to match the, the ambition of people in this country, we could have a very, very, very different future. Sure, but despite this, there's an opinion poll out today which shows Labour's lead over the Tories is narrowing, shrinking to five points. Now, um, as you've touched on, it's not as though things have been going well for the government. It's been another dismal week. So why do you think Labour is losing that, um, that ground, the lead is going down? Well, I remember being on this show a few months ago and being berated for being behind in the polls. I'm pleased that we're ahead in the polls, but obviously I'm not going to rest until we're in Downing Street and able to actually start working with communities across the country to deliver the change that they deserve. I mean, in the end, I've, I've been around in politics long enough to see polls come and go. They go up, they go down. What I'm most concerned about at the moment is that there are people in this country, in every community in this country, who simply can't keep their heads above water. And that's why we've been focused on this cost of living crisis, the fact that people's energy bills are going up, their taxes are about to go up. We're trying to say to the government, look, cancel that tax rise. That's just simply not sustainable for a lot of people in a lot of places. And you can't level up this country if you're taking 
money out of the pockets of working people that would otherwise be spent in the local community. We need strong foundations. We need strong local economies, strong local businesses. And that means backing the people who build Britain. Now, on the issue of parties, that's something that uh, Labour have sought to um damage the government with in terms of attack lines um next week maybe this week coming maybe the week we finally get the sea gray report but we are expecting large parts to be redacted after the met police intervened what do you think the government should publish um a redactor report delay the whole thing until you can have it in its entirety or publish a whole report and simply ignore the met's warnings i think the Prime Minister should end this circus and just be honest about what he knew. I don't need a criminal investigation to tell me whether I was at a party or not. He could just come clean, tell us what was going on on his watch, and he could tell us what his involvement was with it as well. And then it'll be for Tory MPs to decide whether they can support that. And ultimately, it'll be for him and the Conservative Party to face the electorate at the dispatch box. If he won't do that, and it looks increasingly likely that he won't, then our view is get on with it, publish the Sue Gray report in full. There are bereaved families, families that made enormous sacrifices who are now really questioning themselves and what's happened over the last couple of years, who deserve answers now. And so actually... deserves to know whether they've got somebody in charge who has been partying and breaking his own rules, the rules that he asked the rest of us to abide by. Publish the report in full, that's our view. And if need be, ignore that warning and intervention from the Met. Um, now, depending on that report, we could uh, enter even more speculation about Boris Johnson's future. Um, we've uh, had an interview on the programme with Tom Tegenhart, and he has told uh, my co-host Tom Newton-Dunn that he would throw his hat into the ring if there is a leadership contest. Would um, he be a tricky candidate for Labour? Well, look, I, I, I like Tom. Um, I've worked with him a lot over the last few years when I was in the brief as Shadow Foreign Secretary. And actually before that, when he and I did quite a bit of work together, he's somebody who has, um, uh, you know, he's he's come out in typically straight fashion and said that he he will stand. I think it reflects a level of disquiet in the Conservative Party about the Prime Minister because he, he's generally fairly loyal. He has an independent streak, but he's fairly loyal. Um, and the fact that he's speaking out um, about potentially replacing the Prime Minister reflects the fact that I think a lot of Tory MPs are struggling with what is going on. The trouble is that only one of them has actually had the backbone to do anything about it, the courage to actually not just leave the Conservative Party and to make clear that he has no confidence in the Prime Minister, but Christian Wakeford, who came across to Labour a few weeks ago, has also blown the whistle on what has been going on behind the scenes, the really murky, grubby goings-on where people were apparently blackmailed um, with threats to their constituencies if they don't support the Prime Minister. My message to Tom and to everybody else in the Conservative Party is surely you must realise that this can't go on any longer. It's time to put an end to this circus to allow us to uh, replace Boris Johnson as Prime Minister and allow this country to move forward. And uh, I mean, it's worth pointing out that the whips have, have denied some of those allegations made against them. Um, you've had some warm words about Tom Tegenhart. I just wondered briefly, what about Rishi Sunak? He's ultimately seen as the front runner. Would he be a formidable opponent? Do you have any admiration for the Chancellor? He's been distancing himself from the Prime Minister to a degree. Well, look, when I when I speak to Metro mayors and uh, Labour council leaders across the country it the the one place where they've had real trouble getting any traction whatsoever with the government's supposedly flagship agenda the leveling up agenda that big promise that was made to people across this country just a few years ago is the treasury the treasury appears to have ruled out any new money whatsoever we've got this recycled pledge we're being given a third of what london was given um, this situation where London and the South East are treated as the economic powerhouse and the rest of the country has to go begging for crumbs from the table seems to me that Rishi Sunak is absolutely at the centre of that. The prospects of him becoming Prime Minister do not bode well for many people in the nations and regions of the United Kingdom. I think that would be, you know, whether that be good news for Labour or not, judge for yourself but what I'm most interested in is I think that would be extremely bad news for people in this country. So, so more support for Tom Tugendhat from Labour today than Rishi Sunak. Thank you very much for joining us today Lisa and Andy. Thanks very much.